shared with us so many practical get going get making uh, ideas mm -hmm. so I thought we'd start by singing together many of you know this song uh, it's the first song that I ever made on this little harp and the story of it is that I was going into an assisted living home in my part of Massachusetts sort of out by Fitchburg and they didn't have a piano and I wanted to play something also, I, I knew my repertoire was woefully inadequate because what they really wanted to hear were songs from the 40s, and I didn't have them, uh, but I, I knew we could do something. So I, uh, my ex-husband owns this harp, and I begged for his permission for me to use it, and then suddenly it became my harp. Um, <laughs> and uh, anyway, I, I went home and, and wrote this song. So you know some of you this song, but I'm going to ask you anyway. It's called What Did the Wind Say? And uh, it's easy, easy, easy to learn. And uh, I'd love it if you'd sing it with me. So what did the wind say? One syllable. Well, that's lovely. We'll take it. Um, I wrote it as blow, but um, if you want to <laughs> sing who is lovely. Okay. What did the sun say? One syllable. Shine. Good. There's my ringer right there, Libby Frank. Um. <laughs> Thank you, Libby. Uh, what did the flowers say? Bloom. Bloom. Well done. Well done. What did the birds say? Sing. Sing. Lovely. Well, that's interesting. Usually, see, you guys are singers. When I do this with kids, everybody goes tweet, <laughs> and um, or a peep or a chirp. And do you, I say this is a democracy. You can do whatever you like. <laughs> Uh, and then the last one I'll tell you, which is, what did your love say? And that since I wrote it for these lovely old people, it's dear, 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 dear. So the song has my heart's contention that really the world is speaking to us all the time if we listen and we get a lot of good counsel. So sing it with me. I know you'll pick it right up or you already have sung it a thousand times with me.
everyone. Thank you so much for singing with me. Beautiful. That is, I must say, one of the joys of my life is singing with people. I actually, it's become more and more important to me as mm -hmm. I keep going. I just love, it feels wonderful, doesn't it, to sing together? Thank you so much for joining. It's just delightful. So that, I suppose that song comes as a virtue of necessity. And being, at the time, a very beginning harper, it showed me that I could make something, which was so exciting. And make something, and sure enough, actually, I brought it in to the old people, and they sang. Uh, they still wanted to hear, you know, the songs of the 30s and 40s, <laughs> but I did my best, and it worked. <laughs> so, well, I love to read for you uh, one of my favorites. I've written a lot of poems in my life, um, and as Lauren said, I, I read a lot, and I also explore and adventure and dip in, as I know everybody here does. A lot of you do really dive deep. And I wrote this poem when I had just come back from Ireland, and I was absolutely, you know, I was speaking Irish for the first time. I was going to Boston College, so I was a senior in college, and I'd just come back from a year that had really changed me. It had, it had shaped the way I sang. It also introduced me, um, my first Irish folklore teacher, Garo Jukruli, who I always said had my cosmic dance card because everything he was saying was just electrifying to me. My friends said that in, we had this lecture at about four in the afternoon in Cork, and it would be dark. And they would be slumped back in their chairs, and they said I was on the edge of my seat as he was telling us like how many harrows and, uh, and plows had been in County Cork in 1885. And I was thrilled, and they were all snoring away. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how you know, you're, you know it's your thing, because you're just right there. Um, my mother's a knitter and uh, a wonderful Irish knitter and had given me many, many years before a beautiful, I call it the color of mussel shells, this beautiful Gansey, which is the Irish, Anglo-Irish word for a sweater. So I remember coming back from Ireland and walking down next to the library at Boston College and these words came into my mind. And just as you said, you know, there's this rhythm and cadence of language. And I just got so excited uh, and, you know, pulled out paper and was writing on my knee, in, you know, in the lane there. And I just felt it so much. So this is shaped by that. I th I've written a lot of poems, but this poem written so young, I think may be my favorite poem I've ever written. It's called Cables. Just one thing, a curragh is, is a nice little Irish fishing boat. You know that good, okay. Cables. From the wool card in the kitchen, they ravel him out to sea in a jumper of bluest black, color of mussel shells and rain squalls. This is sharing. All humble roads pull both ways, taut intersections of mornings outspin and evenings wind in. The knitters treat the wool with oil to slap off sprays ice hands. They insist on an even trade. The light hours he frays in the curragh, nodding air to sea, sea to air, nets and fish. At supper time, he lopes uphill to the young woman, her chowder, a, a child, a talk under the quilt. She is learning to knit his family name without letters. Cross ropes, honeycombs, smoke phantoms on stone walls, a tree on each sleeve. His mother sits in the cane chair and counts out stitches with her. Every afternoon, until a coarse skin appears in the shape of her man, practically waterproof and unmistakably his. She invokes the yarn against cold, storm, and anonymous drowning. Even after years, a body comes home, drifts into the bay with a face as featureless as kelp. They drag him off the beach and can still discover his name in the salty tangle. He is Nora's man, they say, and she claims him, pointing to the sign for seabirds, three on each shoulder. They bury him under a stone in the churchyard. At the hearth, she was taught of the intricate and endless pattern the women's diligent needles tying strand to strand, and the sea, 
remorselessly tugging the loose end of the skein. Wow. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, friends. I think it's exciting how, well, exactly what Lauren said, that the things of our lives are really our material for making, aren't they? They're, and they, they deliver themselves. For a long time, I worried, you know, I am a pretty passionate scholar of Irish language and folklore. Well, I am a passionate scholar <laughs> of Irish language and folklore, and I'm also a creator my whole life. And when I was younger, people used to torment me with the question, yeah, but what are you really? Are you, a, are you an artist or are you a scholar? And over time, luckily, when you come here into the middle of your life, you realize you're everything, right? You know, you don't say to somebody, are you a gardener or do you cook supper? <laughs> you, you know, oh, I know, I don't, I'm starving now. I'm only gardening. Um, I, you know, these things <laughs> that inspire me, it's, you know, I remember years ago that somebody in the Celtic department was kind of mocked because they were a member of the SCA, the Society of the Cre for Creative Anachronism. And I thought that's ridiculous because that's just another door in to this fascination, right, with medievalism, which is what she wrote her dissertation on. So that was my, my way in, even when I was learning Old Irish, which is the hardest language, bar none, um, ever, was to put things to music and to participate. And that's my word for what we do. I think all of us are participating with the world and with our interests and with other people. So I'd love to play for you a little bit of a, um, I'm, as some of you know, I put poems to music. I'm fascinated with what happens when that spark of inspiration jumps from one person to another person. Mm. And it's exciting that it can happen across the centuries. Do you know? Uh, <laughs> so I was one day reading a book called Undunra, which means the poems of the dispossessed. Dunra is actually just uh, a, a poem book. And actually, guys who would go on, on, on the wars um, used to bring like a little handmade poem book and put it in their breast pocket so that when they were traveling, they had poems. So I found this poem, She Blag Yal Mishmiri. She's the blackberry flower. And from the 18th century, this anonymous voice leapt into my heart, and I needed to participate in it. Mm. So I'm going to sing it to you in Irish and then in English. And I, I so wish we could credit this 18th century person. Whoever you are, thank you. Thank 
you very much. <laughs> Thank you so much. Well, as Lauren was talking about uh, playing around with form, I'm, I'm interested in that too. And over the last, I think if I had to give you one theme of, of what's sort of on the, been, been working in my creative life, it's permission. The more permission I give myself, the more fun I have and the more things I make that I like. Okay. I bet that's true. I see a lot of nodding heads. Yes. So the more, we, the more I say to myself, yes, it's okay to be a scholar and an artist, and it's okay to do things in your own way. Yeah. Um, one thing that really interests me right now is short form, is that a thing can come in, and that's all it needs to be. It doesn't actually have to get bigger. Yeah. Uh, and I got interested in the Norse and Anglo-Saxon tradition of kennings, and kenning comes from that word, I ken, like I know, right? So a kenning is a new way of knowing the world. The world. And you know, the Anglo-Saxon th and the Norse, they had wonderful words for the world. Um, you know, like a ship was the oar's steed. Beautiful, isn't that, you know? And the sun was the sky's jewel. And that's it. Um, so I like to call them lightning quick reimaginings of the world. They just, they're a poem in themselves. So uh, I wrote many series of these. I, I wrote mythical beings. I wrote clocks, biological clock, uh, pocket watch, grandfather clock. I just got on a roll, which is also fun, actually, when you get on a roll mm -hmm. doing something. I just want to read you two of the very briefest ones to show you how brief a poem maybe can be. These are uh, two little ones. The first one is God, hawk on a steeple. That's it. God is a hawk on a steeple. <laughs> um, I mean, I believe God is a lot more than that, but that's one. So, and the other thing about <laughs> kennings is that you could make dozens of them, right? So, like the sun could be the baker who pulls the steaming loaf of, of morning out of the oven, or it could be, you know, the dove who carries day on its wings. It, you can go and go and go. Hmm. So that's God, hawk on a steeple, and goddess, voluptuous rain cloud. <laughs> that's it. You know, uh, it's fun. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's just fun to do that. Uh, so two that I, two, a little pairing just to share with you. Um, I love, I take lots of walks in my neighborhood. I actually moved into my neighborhood because it's walkable. I don't know about you, but that's like one of the top, almost more than the house itself. I needed to know that I could walk there and that there were lovely places. Penny's been with me there. We saw a beautiful crane one day and mm -hmm. it's, it's a gorgeous place. Um, and I get to observe things. So this is a pairing of Kennings. One is Oak Leaf in Summer and the other is oak leaf in autumn. Oak leaf in summer, a hand open to giving and receiving a clasp of sun. That's what they look like to me, like hands. Mm. Now it's so different in the fall, right? Oak leaf in autumn, an old leather glove flung on the, upon the club's hall rug in the heat of a gentleman's wager. <laughs> Watch. <laughs> <laughs> So, and that's uh -huh. it. All right, so it was fun, actually, and this whole little book is, is Kennings, and also I call it Littles, which were poems that didn't want to get any bigger. And just to give myself permission to make little things as well, I want to sing you two short, tiny little songs. Uh, one of them I made one day. Um, my father died now. That's years ago. And, but you know how it is. Your people that you love are always with you. And one of the things I had given my father before he died was a Woolrich jacket to keep him warm because he was really, really cold those times. And I got it back. It was kind of my inheritance. <laughs> was What I got back was the jacket I gave him. And I was wearing it one day, walking through Harvard Square. And this little song came in my mind. And I thought briefly, well, should it be something more? And then I thought, this is all it is. So I'll sing it for you. And I hope that you'll think of the people that matter to you. I wear my dad's old coat, buttoned to the throat. Oh, you surround me, though you're so far away. On the other side of time, we never say goodbye. We only say I miss you, but I'll see you again someday. That's the whole thing. Mm. <laughs> Thank you. And that's all it wanted to be. Now, this is a silly one um, that 
It doesn't want to be anything else. And it's, a, you know, when somebody loans you a book and it becomes instantly a homework assignment. <laughs> <laughs> That's what this is about. <laughs> I don't want to read this book, but I am too polite to tell the truth. <laughs> and so I stick it in my bag. I'll say that I'm sure that I'll enjoy it, but I'm not sure that I will. Because I probably won't read it. <laughs> and then the next week or two or six years, ashamed of my tardiness, I'll hand it back. And thank you, I loved it and it changed my life. <laughs> thank you, I loved it and it changed my life. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect, tell me. Yeah, actually, what did you say? Thank you very much. We want to sing this for you. This is one that Lauren started a riff, and I had this whole vision in my mind. We'll <laughs> sing it. We'll talk more after. Owl in the tree goes hoot in the night. Fox in the bush goes bark. Owl in the tree goes hoot in the night, fox in the bush goes bark. Up in the sky the wind goes sigh, but the shadows they say dark. In the dark. Man in the town. Uh oh. Got it. <laughs> Down in the town the man goes quiet, fire on the great goes spark. Down in the town the man goes quiet, fire on the great goes spark. Out on the hills the wind goes still, but the shadows they say dark in the dark. Ha la la, ha la 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 la. on the stair goes hark girl in the tower goes who do you love voice on the stair goes hark out among the whales the ships go sail but the shadows they say dark in the dark moon in your mouth and you can dance the dark swallow it down in deepest part, never part, shadow singing, swaying, swinging, mystery bringing, mythic pinging, sweetly singing, sweetly springing, wildly winging heart. Owl in the tree goes hoot in the night. Fox in the bush goes bark. Owl in the tree goes hoot in the night. Fox in the bush goes bark. Up in the sky the wind goes sigh, but the shadows they say dark in the dark. Ha la la ha la 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 la. Ha la la.
Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much.